How do we how do we fight that? So like a, a, a neighboring concept of that is conspiracy theories, which is I don't think they're neighboring at all. I, so, well, ahead, let me let me give my yeah, sort of pers naive perspective. Maybe you can educate me on this. From my perspective, conspiracy theories are these constructs of ideas that go deeper and deeper and deeper into uh, creating worlds where there's uh, powerful pedophiles controlling things like these uh, very sophisticated models of the world yeah. that you know in part might be true, but in large part I would say are are figments of imagination that become really useful constructs and self reinforcing self reinforcing for then feeding like empowering the trolls to attack the uh, powerful the conventionally powerful. I, I don't think that that's a function of conspiracy theories. Now let's talk about conspiracy theories because one of my quotes is you take one red pill, not the whole bottle. This concept that everything yeah. in life is at the function of a small cadre of individuals would be for many people reassuring because as bad as it looks, you know they, whoever they are, it's usually the Jews, aren't gonna let it get that bad, that they will pull back. Or the, the black pill, is that they are intentionally trying to destroy everything and there's nothing we can do and we're doomed. And there's an amazing book by Arthur Herman called The Idea of Decline in Western History. I, it's one of my top 10 books where he goes through every 20 years how there's a different population that say, it's the end of the world, here's the proof. And very often the proof is something that is kind of self-fulfilling where there's no, it's not falsifiable. And we both have to think of ways to falsify our claims from earlier. Yeah. So it is a big danger. It's a big danger online because very quickly, if someone who you thought was good, but now is bad on one aspect, well, they're controlled opposition or they've been uh, taken over or they've been kind of uh, appropriated by the, the bad people, whoever those bad people would be. Um, I don't know that I have a good answer for this. I don't think it's as pervasive as people think. The number of people who believe conspiracy theory? Right, the, I mean, and also conspiracy theory is a term used to dismiss ideas that have some currency. The Constitutional Convention was a conspiracy. Uh, the founding fathers got together secretly under swore to secrecy in Philadelphia, said, we're throwing out the Articles of Confederation, we're making a new government, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Luther Martin left and he f told everyone, this is a conspiracy. And they're like, yeah, whatever, Luther Martin. So, and Jeffrey Epstein was a conspiracy. Harvey Weinstein was a conspiracy. Bill Cosby was a conspiracy. They all knew, they didn't care. Uh, communist infiltration in America. There's a great book by Eugene Lyons called The Red Decade. They all knew they ex every atrocity that uh, was done under Stalinism was excused in the West. And if you didn't believe it, oh, you've got this crazy anti-Russia conspiracy. So it's a term that is weaponized uh, in a negative sense, but that does not at all imply that it does not have very negative real life consequences because it's kind of a cult of one, right? Like I'm at home on my computer, I buy into this ideology. Anyone who doesn't agree with me, they are blind, they're oblivious, mom and dad, my friends, you don't get it. We were warned about people like you. And I think there's a very heavy correlation, and I'm not a psychiatrist, of course, between that and certain types of mild mental illness, like uh, you know, some kind of paranoia, schizophrenia, or things like that. Because af after a certain point, if everything is a function of this conspiracy, it, it, it's, it, there's no randomness or beauty in life. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know if you can say anything interesting about it in, in the way of advice of how to take a step into conspiracy theory world without completely going, like diving deep, because it seems like that's what happens. People can't look at Jeffrey Epstein. I can tell you what the advice I'd have. Start seriously and rigorously uh, without going, because you can look at Jeffrey Epstein and say there's a deeper thing you can always go deeper. Right. It's like Jeffrey Epstein was just a tool of uh, the lizard people, and the lizard people are the well, tool. Well, they say Satanists. Satanists, uh, um, in this case. And somehow recently very popular pedophiles somehow always involved. I'm not understanding any of that. I, need, I legitimately, I say this both humorously and seriously, I need to look into it. Be, and, and I guess the bigger question I'm asking, how does a serious human being uh, somebody with a position at a respectable university, like look at a conspiracy theory and look into it. When I look at somebody like Jeffrey Epstein, who had a role 
at MIT. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I and I think I'm not happy personally. I didn't. I wasn't there when Jeffrey Epstein was there. I'm not happy with the behavior of people now about Jeffrey Epstein, about the bureaucracy and the everybody's trying to keep quiet, hoping it blows over without really looking into any like looking in a deep philosophical way of like how do we let this human being be among us? Can I give you a better example? Sure. That that is kind of conspiratorial. The Speaker of the House, the longest serving Republican Speaker of the House, Dennis Hastert was a pedophile. He went to jail. The Democrats don't throw this in the Republicans' faces every five minutes. Not even Democratic activists. I find that very, very odd and not what I would predict. Now, I'm not saying there's some kind of conspiracy, but when it comes to things like sexual predation, which is something that I'm very, very concerned about. I'm an uncle now. My sister just had her second kid recently. He's adorable. Um, it's something that I don't understand if it feels as if there's a lot of people who want this to all go away. Now, I think it's also because we don't have the vocabulary and framework to discuss it. Because when you start talking about things like children and these kind of issues, we want to believe it's all crap. Because it's for those of us who aren't in this kind of mindset, the idea that this happens to kids and happens frequently is something so horrible yeah. that we it's just like, I don't even wanna hear it. And that does these children and adult survivors an enormous disservice. So I don't know that I have any particular insight on this. But see, like, how do you, I mean, the Catholic Church, again, there's all these topics that- Public uh, school teachers are far more proportionally uh, Predators of children in the Catholic Church. I mean, I don't know what, the, I. you're right, you're right. Um, perhaps I'm, uh, I've been, you know, reading a lot about Stalin and Hitler. Yeah. Somehow it's more comforting. Yeah, like to be there able to, and then. And then, and then the atrocities that are happening now, it's a little bit more difficult because- There was a New York Times article, sorry to interrupt you, where they were had a, um, people tracking down child pornography. And I think the article said that they didn't have enough people just to cover the uh, videotapes of infants being raped. And we can even wrap our heads around like reading Lolita, like, okay, she's 14, 12, okay, it's still a female. An infant, it, it's it's something that, again, like with the Stalin example, we sat down here for a hundred years, we would never think of something like this, think of it in a sexual context, it makes no sense. Yeah. Um, so, and the fact that this is international, okay, we eliminated completely in America. Well, then they're gonna go find, this, there's infants all over the world. There's video cameras all over the world. So then it has to become a conspiracy because I someone has to film it, I'm filming it, you're buying it, your kid, it is literally, uh, a conspiratorial, not in the sense of like a mafia conspiracy or some government Illuminati, but there is our networks designed to produce this product. See, but like what I'm, I'm trying to do now, I mean, part of the, the one of the nice things with like a podcast and other things I'm involved with is um, removing myself from having any kind of boss, so I can do whatever. Yes, the hell. it's oh, it's so it's so wonderful that just happened to me. It's 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 the most wonderful thing ever. Uh, so I could do, I can actually in moderation consider like look into stuff. Careful though. I was gonna write a book about this and people pointed out, you sure wanna do this research? Cause if you start Googling around for this kind of stuff, it's on your computer. Oh, in that sense. Yeah. I'm more concerned about, you know, it's the Nietzsche thing, looking into the abyss. Like you wanna be very, Yeah. I believe I can do this kind of thing in moderation without slipping into, oh, yes. into the depths. Of course. I think that's, in, that's intelligence. That's uh, like I recently, quote unquote, looked into like the UFO community, the um, extraterrestrial what, whatever community. I think it always frustrated me that the scientific community like rolled their eyes at all the UFO sightings, all that kind of stuff. Even though there could be fascinating, beautiful physical fun. Like first of all, there could like legit, ball lightning. The ball lightning, right? That that's at the very basic level is a fascinating thing. And also it could be something like, I mean, I, I don't know, but it could be something interesting, like worth looking into. Right. My grandfather was an air traffic controller back in the Soviet Union. And he said, we saw this stuff all the time. These are planes that were not moving or whatever things that were not moving according to th anything we knew about. Yeah. So it's absolutely real. He's not some jerk with an iPhone in his backyard. This is a, a military professional who understood technology, who knew where the secret bases were. Yeah. So if he's telling me it's something, doesn't mean it's Martians, 
but he's telling me there's something there. And there are many examples of, of these like military people. These aren't some layman who sees yeah, a story. These are legit people. Yeah. And and so it's you, you you can dismiss when you're talking about professionals who are around aircraft all the time, who are familiar with aircraft at the highest levels, and they're seeing things that they can't explain. It's they're clearly not stupid and they're clearly not underformed. So my there's different ways to dismiss ideas. For example, I I'm uh you were saying that trolling is a good mechanism. I'm against that, but I'm not dismissing it by like rolling my eyes. I'm considering legitimately that you're way smarter than me and you understand the world better than me. Like I'm allowing myself to consider that possibility and thinking about it. Like maybe maybe that's true. Like s seriously considering it. That's what that's I feel the way people should approach intelligent people, serious quote unquote people, scientists should approach yes. conspiracy theories. Like look at it carefully, you know, is first of all, is it possible that the earth is flat? It's not trivial to show that the earth is not flat. It's a very good exercise. You should go through it. It's yes. Pretty, but once you go through it, you realize that uh, the, based on a lot of data and a lot of evidence, and there's a lot of different experiments you could do yourself actually, uh, to show that the earth is not flat. Okay, the same kind of process can be taken for a lot of different conspiracy theories and yes. it's helpful. And without slipping into the depths of of lizard people running everything, that's where I, I I've now listened to two episodes of um, of Alex Jones's show <laughs> because he goes crazy deep into um, into different kind of worldviews that I was not familiar with. Right, and I don't know what to make of it. I mean, the reason I've been listening to it is because. Um, there's been a lot of discussions about platforming of different people. Yeah. And I've been thinking about what does censorship mean? I've, I've been thinking about it, wh whether, because Joe Rogan uh, said he's gonna have Alex on again. And then I enjoyed it as a fan, just the entertainment of it. But then I actually listened to Alex and I was thinking, is this human being dangerous for the world? Like, is the ideas he's saying dangerous for the world? I, I'm more concerned with the Russian conspiracy that we had for three years. And the claim that our election was not legitimate and that everyone in the Trump White House is a stooge of Putin. Uh, and the people who said this had no consequences for this. Alex Jones doesn't have the respect that they do. Uh, these are both areas of concern for me. But he he might if there's if he's given more platforms. So like the, 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 the people who've, and I'd be curious, if, I'm also a little bit, I don't know what to think about the idea that R Russians hacked the election. It, it, it seems too easily accepted in the mainstream media. As Hillary as Clinton said that how they did it was they had ads on the dark web. Now you and I both know what the dark web is. So the possibility of ads on the dark web having an influence, uh, a proportional influence on the election is literally zero. Perhaps I should look into it more carefully, but. I've found very little good data on exactly what did the Russians do to hack elections? Like, like technically speaking, what are we talking about here? Like, as opposed to these kind of weird, like the, the best thing, there's a couple of books and like reporting on like farms. Like troll a, farms, yeah. Troll farms. But let's see the data, like how many exactly, what are we talking about? Like, what were they doing? Relative, not just like some anecdotal discussions right. of, but like relative to the bigger, the size of Facebook. Like if there's a few people, several hundred say, the posting different political things on Facebook, relative to the full size of Facebook, let's look at the full, size. Like, right, you're thinking and, like a scientist. The actual impact, yeah. like, because like, it's fascinating, the social dynamics of viral information, of videos, when when uh, Donald Trump retweets something, that I think that's understudied the effect of that. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> he retweeted <laughs> a clip with Joe Rogan on, um, with, and Mike Tyson, where Mike Tyson says that he finds fighting orgasmic I don't understand that, but it'd be fascinating to think like, what is the ripple effect on the social uh, dynamic of our society from re retweeting a clip about Mike Tyson? What's like, your favorite Joe Rogan, um, um, Trump tweet? I I, t I tuned him out a long time ago, oh, okay. unfortunately. I, I've, 
I have, um, it's the, this goes to the, we, you and I have a different relationship with Donald Trump. You appreciate the art form of trolling. This is non-sexual. Non-sexual, yeah. So <laughs> I, uh, I tend to prefer uh, Bill Clinton. He's more my type. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like that consent stuff. <laughs> no, the consent, no. <laughs> uh, no, you appreciate the art form of trolling and, and uh, Donald Trump is is a, a, a master. He's the Da Vinci of, yeah. uh, of trolling. So I tend to think that trolling is ultimately destructive for society. And then Donald Trump takes nothing seriously. He's playing a game. He's making a game out of everything. He takes a lot of things seriously. I think he's very committed to uh, international peace. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, I shouldn't speak so strong. I think I think he takes actually, yes, a lot of things seriously. I meant on Twitter and the game of politics. Yeah. He is, um, he only takes- Irreverently. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I appreciate it. I just- would like to focus on like genuine, real expressions of humanity, especially positive. Well, this is one. This is, this is my favorite tweet. My fans got it laser etched and put in a block of lucite for me. And he said, every time I speak of the losers and haters, I do so with great affection. They cannot help the fact that they were born fucked up. <laughs> That's an actual Trump tweet. It's my favorite one. <laughs> And that's kind of nice. And that's love. That's love. <laughs> that's that's kind of nice. Great affection. <laughs> that, <laughs> I mean, exclamation point. <laughs> even, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I broke Lex. What is love? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sparks are flying. But the, uh, I have to kind of analyze that from a, like a literary perspective. But <laughs> it seems like there's love in there, like a little yeah. bit. Like it's, it's a little bit lighthearted. Because he's saying, even when I'm going after them, don't take it so seriously. Yeah, yeah. that's that's nice. It is nice. That's it acknowledging is. the game of it. That's, yes. Uh, that's nice. Uh, he's not always no, nice. Sometimes he's very, very vicious. Yeah. Very vicious. He's done things that I, I can tell you about that I'm like, this is a bad person. 